I am not above criticism. In fact, I'm going to critique my own squat form in today's video from 12 and 13 years ago when I was doing full range of motion or ass to grass squats. In fact, a lot of people don't realize this, but I come from a full range of motion or deep squat slash ass to grass squat background. I had to abandon that 10 years ago, roughly because of the injuries and pain that it caused my body. So I want to go and look at the handful of videos and proof, if you will, of the footage that shows that I used to squat like this. I used to train with full range of motion. And I want to do this not just to go through my own personal journey of what I went through, but also to help you, the audience, understand these things so you can avoid the same pitfalls and injuries. So we're going to examine the oldest squat footage that I have of me doing deep squats. I want to just give a little bit of context of where I was in my life and with training and also during my PhD because this was right in the middle of me doing my PhD and I had started to stumble upon the 90 degree uh, principles in the research when we were looking at biomechanics, neuromuscular physiology, structural muscle physiology. So I knew there was something to that, but I wasn't sold because I was still under this mindset that I had to go deep. And as you can see here, I'm gonna just going to let this roll. And there's a few things I'm going to comment on here, but Okay, you can see that's that's pretty deep. Yep, that's me. I know a lot of people don't believe that, but okay. Okay, so this was, uh, again, obviously pretty deep. Some people would say that's not true ass to grass because I could have gone deeper. That was the limits of my mobility and the limits of what my joints would allow without feeling excruciating pain. But you can see a few things here. First off, uh, there is some minor spinal flexion. Now the level of spinal flexion shown here, most fitness influencers in today's social media world would consider that to be perfectly fine. No issues with that. But I can tell you from firsthand experience, even minor spinal flexion or butt wink is what it's often referred to. That can, and not just can, it does lead to issues over time on almost inevitably, whether it takes six months or six years, it took probably five, six, seven years for me to start noticing that in my own body. But when it hits, it hits hard. Something else I want to uh, point out here, I'm going to let this roll again, is notice the bar, how it shifts. Because I have scoliosis, or I had scoliosis, I still do have scoliosis. You can see that little, that little turn of the bar there. Pretty much all of my squats, I would have this asymmetrical shift in my body. It led to a, a host of issues that I'm going to talk about here in a second. But that's the bar shift. And oftentimes what I would do at the bottom is I would hold that position, trying to fine tune my mechanics in the bottom until I found what felt to be as symmetrical of a position as possible without being in too much pain. But you can also see I'm kind of shifting around a little bit for two reasons. First off, I'm trying to pull down and gain as much mobility or range of motion as I can. So I'm squeezing slash pulsing into that position, but also some of the adjustments that you'll see in this video and some of the other ones I'll show here in a few minutes. Um, I'm just going to let it run again while I'm talking here, but it's because I'm trying to uh, find a position where there isn't pain, especially in my hips, knees, and low back, because it, it's, it's at this point in my journey, I could tell the cartilage in my joints was degenerating. I didn't have uh, much left, and I, I st still don't to this day probably because once you wear down cartilage, it doesn't come back. So I was always trying to fine-tune like, ooh, where does that hurt? Or, ooh, I felt that in my hip. Let me adjust. Let me shift. So that's what you see here. Uh, something else I want to point out was the mindset that I was under at this point in time. Again, I, I started to see some of the research about 90 degrees. I was kind of in denial of it. I was playing around with it. So most of my squats were ass to grass this time, but I played around with what I consider 90 then, which was actually parallel or roughly 120 degrees of knee flexion. I'll get into that in another video. But my mindset was this. My mindset was that, okay, I want to increase my mobility. I want to get my joints feeling better because I started to experience joint pain. Things started to stiffen up more in my body. I was gradually starting to lose range of motion because of this joint pain and from overstretching the muscles and the muscles coming back tighter. But my mindset was what was often shared and still is by many fitness experts is that if you can just go a little deeper, if you can just stretch it a little more, if you can open up your hips, you can open up your mobility just a little further, you're going to feel this amazing improvement in mobility and your joint health is just going to skyrocket. So every squat session, I had this mindset like, oh, I can just get a little more range of motion, just go a little deeper, 
even, and as long as it didn't have too much discomfort, then I would experience this you know, huge breakthrough in mobility. But that didn't happen. What ends up happening is you inflame your joints, you start wearing down the cartilage, the muscles come back with a vengeance to prevent you from overstretching in the future, and you're left in the state where you're actually tighter than you previously were, and so you go back to the gym thinking, oh, I gotta stretch more, I have to get more mobility. And that was my mindset for many years but I was starting to kind of rethink it at this point because of the level of pain that I was experiencing. I wanna move on to the next video. And again, I only have a handful of videos from 12, 13 years ago. And before I go any further, I do wanna point out one other thing. The other reason I was trying to get more stretch and more range of motion for many years is because I came across the research on muscle spindles. And the idea with muscle spindles is that those are the feedback mechanisms embedded within our muscles that give us more sense of feel, allow us to fine tune our mechanics and have better positioning. Well, those get activated under stretched conditions. So I thought like most people do, oh, well, more stretch, more muscle spindle activation, more sense of feel. That's not the case. Muscle spindles have to have tension in the muscles to be fully activated. And that happens to be around 90 degrees. So if you go too deep, you actually have less muscle spindle activation and less sense of feel. So for this one, we have a posterior view, which is very important here because you can see how I actually favor one side quite dramatically. This was not quite as deep as the other squats. This particular day, my brother was home from, uh, I think it was winter break, and I told him, hey, I wanna try to kind of fix my squat form um, because I could tell I was asymmetrical and my joints were hurting and I, I knew I was always shifting to the right. Uh, it was a compensation pattern. Well, the reason I was compensating, I'll run that again, is because of the pain in my body. If I didn't have that shift and tilt to the right, my left IT band and knee would be killing me, my right inner groin would be in excruciating pain, and my right upper, lower, middle, back area would also be so spastic and tight that the only way my body would actually allow me to get in these deeper positions was it had to compensate. So this is something you see with most every individual. Compensation patterns are often a result of placing your body into biomechanically unsound positions. It wasn't until I actually started training 90 degrees where those compensation patterns left. But um, one other thing to point out here is that my right upper back, the pain I experienced for years due to squatting deep with those compensation patterns, when I would foam roll it, the pain would take my breath away it was so extreme and nothing fixed that until I actually changed and started squatting to roughly 90 degrees. So we're going to move on to the next video here. And this was taken after I kind of rehabbed my body and my low back a few months after what we just watched from the other video where I had those spinal injuries. And I started to transition more into a parallel squat, which in my mind was actually 90 degrees at the time. I didn't realize that parallel is actually roughly 120 degrees of knee flexion because the tibia is inclined. It's called tibial inclination. I've made videos on that in the past. I'm going to make some new ones on that as well so you guys can have a better understanding of that. Um, something to keep in mind before I roll the video on this one. This was 255 pounds here plus a light band of like 30 or 40 pounds. The other videos when I'm squatting deep, I used anywhere from 185 to 275 and that was getting close to the upper limit of what I could handle doing deep squats. Uh, but oftentimes I would just keep it to 185 to 225 so that I didn't have too much weight because my joints couldn't handle it. So it's not like I was using crazy loads and that's what destroyed my joints. No, it was the range of motion that hurt my joints. What we see here is a little better spinal neutrality. I stop about parallel. Okay, you can see things are a little bit more locked in, also having a little bit more power because I'm in a more biomechanically sound position than I was with the deep squats. So you can see this transition here where my body was forced to start abbreviating the range of motion, but also it actually helped everything get cleaner and more concise. So for this video, we're gonna see I really started to clean things up to another level. Now, that's not quite 90 degrees actually. It's a little bit below, a little further than 90, probably 100, maybe 110 degrees. It's above parallel, but again, parallel and 90 degree joint angles are not the same thing. But you can see as a result of having to work on my form, this was about 11 and a half years ago, of understanding that in order to be able to move and squat without pain, to fix my joint issues, to clean things up, to be in a more neutral spinal position, and even, even my feet. You can see that my feet were starting to get a lot straighter here. They weren't so rotated out like a ballerina. 
they were straighter, which when we look at biomechanics, it shows straight foot position is in fact optimal. I had a much more neutral spine. And my mindset at this point was, okay, I'm going to lock in my spine. I'm going to lock in my feet a little bit straighter, and I'm going to go as deep as I can without pain, which again, really cleaned things up. It wasn't enough to get me pain free, but it really uh, created and uh, produced some tremendous improvements in my joint health and in the way that I felt. And before we wrap this up, I just want to show you guys my current squat form. This is the most recent footage that I have. This was about a month ago of me doing squats with 405 plus about 150 pounds of band tension at the top. And this is a 90 degree joint angle squat with a brief 90 degree eccentric isometric. You can see it right here. I get my spine locked in, feet are perfectly straight, boom explode up. That's a 90 degree joint angle. I'll pause it for you guys. So you can see that. Let's see if I can pause it. Boom, right there. That is a 90 degree joint angle. You can see here, feet were straight and my head was tall. Also something that you'll notice I was not doing on any of my other videos was nasal breathing because again, I've already made videos on this, but nasal breathing helps lock in the spine and vice versa. So you don't have those energy leaks. But what's interesting, I think the most fascinating point of this is that I am currently pain-free. I've been pain-free for years, and I'm squatting way more weight. I have a lot more muscle in my body. I'm a lot more explosive, a lot more athletic than I've ever been, and I'm 40 years old. And when I compare that to what I was doing 12, 13, 14 years ago when my body was in excruciating pain, I can squat 500-plus pounds now and actually have it be very therapeutic in my body. Whereas doing 135 pounds with lousy form and using deep range of motion is actually very contra-therapeutic on my body. It breaks my body down. So again, it has nothing to do with the load. It has everything to do with how you do the movement. If I actually want to squat deep now, I can because my body has healed itself. What ended up happening previously is I lost my range of motion from squatting deep and all the inflammation and injuries, but now my body is healthy. So if I put 225 on the bar, not only does it feel like a feather because I'm used to handling more than double that, but I can actually go deep because my body's healthy. And I did this with Zach Thielander's program. He sent me a program to do when we swapped programs and I did, you know, 225 going deeper and it felt easy because I'm so used to going heavier and I've also built a lot of muscle from the 90 degree method. So you can see um, the, the context of everything here. In my opinion, the 90 degree method wins hands down, not just for my body, but we've seen the same thing in all of our athletes that we've trained and so many of our clients, it's literally transformed thousands of lives. So that's why I wanted to kind of run through these different videos and show you the journey that I went through over the last 13, 14 years, because I honestly believe that it's going to help you guys if you take this information and apply it to your own training. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out this other one. I think you'll find it just as informative.